everybody. Welcome to episode nine of Holistic Health Happy Hour. Uh, joined with me is my dear co-host, Maria Schumacher. I'm Julie Sherwood. And um, as things would have it, Mercury's playing havoc with me. So if I'm stumbling over my words, it is not because I've started my happy hour ahead of time. Just putting it out there. Um, I am, like I said, Julie Sherwood, your Best Hopes Wellness Coaching. I do constellational astrology work. I'm a root cause therapy practitioner, Reiki master, and a solution-focused wellness coach. And so I love to use the cosmos and your native blueprint to integrate what it is you're evolutionarily and energetically here to do. And if you've got blocks to that, we can talk about how to move those blocks out of your way. So that's what I do. And my dear friend, Maria, tell us about yourself. Hello. I am Maria Schumacher. I am a 13 sign constellational astrologer, a practicing witch, and an interior designer by day. So that's what I do. I have a a website for my esoteric practices, which is venus-13.com. Venus because that's my goddess, and 13 because of 13 sign constellational astrology that I practice. I also write a daily astrology blog on a a page called Cosmic Reflections and the um, Radical Astrology Facebook page. So on Facebook, yeah, I I know, I'm old. I just dated myself there. I'm pretty much a Facebook kind of gal, but there it is. Um, So yeah, I write a little something every day. I have a personal website and... um, Happy to be here with all of you. Check us out. And you also write the daily on Patreon. So people can go be a member on Patreon. Just put a little tip in her cookie jar there for her to have a happy hour beverage. And you'll get it in your email. So that's another thought. And I'm at yourbesthopeswc.com. So feel free to pop me a message there. We'll put it on our uh, description under the video, out on our socials. But anyway, let's get started. What do we got in the sky here, my friend, for our tomorrow? So in a scant few hours, uh, the moon will awaken to a whole new cycle. Full moon in Taurus conjunct Venus. Yes, Taurus. Again, let's, you will not be labored to point. You look up, it's in Taurus. And uh, it is conjunct Venus to within one degree. I mean, it's just, it's just real tight. So Venus is getting her message of you are beautiful. You are valuable. You are worthy. You are loved. Double amplified. Yeah. Right. With this conjoining of the sun and the moon. Yes. And then we get to take that message along with us through this next lunar cycle right because this uh a new moon when the sun and jo- the sun and moon can join that begins a new lunar cycle so we get to start a little something new with that beautiful venus flavor on top of it julie will you tell us more about tell us more about venus and taurus tell us about the awesomeness of that well yeah i mean if there isn't sensual beauty amplified you know venus her home stars are taurus and taurus is all about the five senses. it's not all about but a lot of it is the five senses how do we experience the world through sight sound smell taste and touch and earthly delights the earthly delights absolutely and and venus wants us to enjoy it it's all about what you enjoy And, you know, part of this is also when you experience the world through these five senses, you bring this into your individual self. And, you know, it might sound kind of odd, but I think this is a way to really recognize, because Taurus is also about your your resources, right? Not just your money and your food and your clothes and all that, but the intrinsic ones, self-value, self-worth, self-confidence, self-esteem, all of that. And if you can experience your entire self through all five senses, you really can truly value what it is you have to hold within yourself. And this new moon is asking us to do that because Venus, as my dear friend wrote today, had a little party today. She danced with a lot. 
of her friends. The moon sure did. I mean, yes, yes the moon. Yeah, yes. uh, our right. our moon had a busy day today. I yes. mean, she she started the morning fresh off of a day with uh, Uncle Dave, and uh, then hanging out with um, her girl. Al Ghul overnight, the Eye of Medusa, and then a pajama party with the Pleiades, which had to be fun, right? She was in the Pleiades overnight, waking up to breakfast with Jupiter, lunch with Mercury, then a stop by Aldebaran. As we speak, the moon is conjunct the Eye of the Bull. Yes. And, and, and this is cool. This is cool because it's getting that you remember how we've talked about the moon reflects? Yes. Right? And the moon reflects our emotional state. Mm -hmm. And so when we're with Aldebaran, the eye of the bull, the all-seeing eye. Oh, right? yes, it is. <laughs> yes, that it's always watching. So there's, there's going to be no bullshit with this you know with, with this matchup because whatever we're feeling how however we emotionally respond to things is going to have to be authentic or we're gonna have problems yeah and the good news about that is we only have problems if we're not responding authentically and it's a gentle problem you know i i, I it if it's just a mistake, then okay, the course correction will be easy. If it's a chronic, I, you know, I deny my true emotional connection to anything and only wants to go after money and power and those sort of earthly things, then the, the correction is going to be more severe. Mm hmm Mm -hmm. and, and I think with Uranus, um, or as we call him, Uncle Dave, uh, having Dave. just ingressed Taurus by one degree, you know, this is the beginning of him really knocking on the door saying, hey, are you really being authentically yourself? Are you really showing your entire you, your truthful outward self to the world? Because well, how can how can anybody else out there value you if you're not valuing who you truly are Taurus you self-worth self-value and yes self Taurus you self-worth self and what is really of value that's another yes. thing that, that Uranus is going to be in our face with like okay really you think this is valuable okay <laughs> yeah um or have you noticed that this is also valuable? Um, sure. That 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 sort of thing. So yeah, values are going to be tested partly by throwing things that we think we value in our face and seeing what our emotional reaction, our genuine emotional reaction is to it. Right. Does right. this make you feel good? If no, Uranus is going to say, <laughs> well, or some, you know, equally eloquent response to it. <laughs> eloquent yes <laughs> and, and you know who's expanding all of that sensation in Taurus is Jupiter Jupiter's like know. you didn't see it I'm going to open it up bigger you didn't see it I'm going to open it up even bigger you know so you got to watch for that yeah and the good news about that is the flip side of that works too oh you like blueberries let's have all the blue you know you, yeah you like that kind of thing because yeah. so what you do value gets amplified what you don't value gets amplified what you are authentic about gets amplified what you are shady about what you are inauthentic about also gets amplified so it's it's really wanting to bring you back into your integrity and your owning your ownership of your true value and what is a value in your life and, and you know the other one too is mr mercury there which we talked about a little earlier off camera um he's he's inviting us to be curious about it in a new way mm -hmm. i think with all of this activity going on in taurus 
it's it's be curious, exchange the concepts with others, be open to what others might be sharing with you about what they see. Yes. You know, yeah. and, and this is a new way to see if I really want 10 barrels of blueberries or do I really want to try something new today? Maybe I only need, you know, a bowl full because I can't eat that many before they spoil. Absolutely. But, uh, yeah. I want to leap ahead, Julie, just a yeah. minute. And, and we didn't mention this in the green room, so surprise, but I, I wanted to, to leap ahead just a little bit since we're mentioning Mercury and Venus. In this lunar cycle, and in fact, in the first half of this lunar cycle, um, we get Mercury conjoining Venus at the sun, which alchemically creates the divine hermaphrodite. This right. is kind of a big deal. And so I'll just go over it again briefly. Um, in alchemy, alchemically speaking, Mercury represents the divine masculine principle, the male principle. Venus represents the female principle. The great work consists of bringing them together in resolution right resolving they are always in opposition but resolving the tension of that opposition within a human being yeah. is the great work um so that's how we get the divine herm aphrodite hermes mercury aphrodite, aphrodite yep right so it doesn't mean necessarily sex less gender less it just means that within you, because we all have both, we have resolved the opposition of whatever quantity of each our unique system has. Right. We do that through the philosopher's stone, the heart. Right? Yes. In the stars, this is going to be symbolized by Mercury conjoining the sun in front of it. I'm the sun. See, the sun is always us. This is me. Mm -hmm. Here's Mercury and here's Venus. Yep, yep. There you go. I, the sun, am resolving the opposition. Ah, kind of cool, huh? And, and, and that actually morphs beautifully in where we want to take our holistic health happy hour. Oh my one, God, it does too. Yes, yeah. it does. Because do it, do it, Drew. What's interesting is we were talking a lot about the concept of, again, the masculine, feminine, divine, masculine, divine, feminine, and the whole, how we see the evolution of tropical Western astrology and constellational. And it, it, not to disparage or denigrate, some of y'all may out there do that because you follow us 13 sign constellational ones, but the, it has its place. And, and the thing to recognize what came to us was the tropical became the more masculine energy of applying astrological principles because it's very mathematically pretty. It's very logical. It's very exacting. 30 degrees, 12 and signs. Limited. And contained. Limited. And, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and so by bringing in the element of the divine feminine, we bring us back to the cosmology of the stars as they are in the sky with all 13 divine feminine number constellations that cross the ecliptic. Singing. So we're, we're bringing this energy back into the stars. And we're going to do that in a little bit different way. Before we were doing the new moon, we would say, okay, let's talk about how your natal moon placement is. And this is how you can work with it. And then the full moon we would do by your house. But we're going to do this a little differently this time. And how might we be doing that, my friend? We are going to take you on a little journey. We want there to be, we wanted there to be a more individual approach, right? Instead of just y'all listening to us yak, which is fascinating. Don't get me wrong. But it would be more fun. Mercury. Oh my gosh. Mercury. We're looking at different ways we're going to communicate with people. <laughs> exactly. With exactly. But I, 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 we felt that there would be, that this would serve you better to have a more interactive component. So we're going to create and post a guided meditation that is going to take us, anybody who sits this, and you can sit at any time, 
we're going to go to the Hall of the Zodiac and meet your the totem animal for your moon sign. So all you have to know is what sign your moon is in, what constellation the moon was in when you were born. If you were born today, that moon would be in Taurus. So we're going to go in meditation to the Hall of the Zodiac and meet um, the 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 totem of that constellation. They are going to introduce you to the astrological guide who is going to lead you through this lunar cycle. Yep. So let's say let's say you were born today and your moon's in Taurus. Taurus. So when we go to the Hall of the Zodiac, you're going to go to the Taurus throne and meet the bull. And the bull of Taurus is going to pull back the curtain behind his throne. And an animal is going to come out. And that animal is going to be your guide through this next item. And so then you can get messages from it in the form of like, like really, when you see this animal in real life, there's something to it. You know you're being guided. You can look up this, I should probably say creature instead of animal, because it could be a, you know, a flaming pink dragon. Don't know. Don't know what you're going to get. But, but, but that's something for you to look up and something with which you can personally interact. Yeah. And then get some messages. And then at the full moon, what are we going to do at the full moon? So on the full moon, then we want, so what we're going to do, like we're doing today is we're pre-recording the new moon. We'll post the new moon uh, recording in Radical Astrology, Cosmic Reflections, and on our socials. And then what we're going to do for the full moon is go live in Radical Astrology. And we're going to give you the opportunity to interact with us through that live um, broadcast to give us an idea how it worked for you. So here I'll, I can use an example. So I am a Taurus moon, even though I wasn't born in June, but when I was born, the moon was in Taurus. And so again, I'll go to the, the meditation, connect to the Taurus bull and have the Taurus bull guide me to that animal or creature or symbol even, you know, it could be anything, right? This is my cosmological star guide. So let's just say it's a butterfly. And so a butterfly comes through to me and then I would ask the butterfly, how can you help me move through this Taurus new moon? Because it just happens to be Taurus. This Taurus new moon, as it as we plant the seeds, help me guide, guide me to my intentions so that when the full moon comes around in Sagittarius, that I can better use the energies to harvest the intention. So we look to that guide. You might do journaling, you might do you know, again, imagery or look up, what does it mean to have a butterfly as a spirit animal? Whatever it is that you intuitively bring in, divine feminine energy intuitively bring in, then that's what will help guide you to using the energetic potential to its fullest for you. And we want you to let us know how that's going. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's yeah. the interactive piece. So, and, it, and this is beautiful because this is a new way of using the hermaphroditic energy. You know, you've got this mercury that we can really get into the logic of it all, but instead it's like, we'll get you the information, mercury, but we're going to do it through an intuitive process, Venus meditation. And we're, yep. And we're going to bring it in. We're also going to bring it down through our bodies in a practical way. Yeah. So again, it's, it's not just. Maria and Julie are telling you what you might feel during this. It's okay. This is my guide. Now, how am I going to interact with that? How am I going to get the lesson out? Of it? And then, and yeah, there, there will be a certain amount of it is up to you, but we can help you. Yes. That's the point. That's the point. And, and we've got some other little things we're cooking up our sleeves to really bring in this divine feminine um, energy back to using it in astrology. Yes. And so we, we've got some reference materials we're going to create for that. So to really expand how you connect to the stars of Pisces, the stars of Virgo, the stars of Leo, and you may very well be a Aries sun and a Capricorn moon. 
-hmm. So how can you use your guide to help you understand how to move through in the most, the highest, most optimal way? Exactly. How is the cosmos speaking to you? Yep. Yep. Through your moon sign. Absolutely. Absolutely. This is so, our crazy plan. Yeah. Well, and what's also interesting, this go around, we were also noting that if you, you actually follow the trajectory of the moon as she moves through the rest of the constellations to take her place in the full moon, she's not making a whole lot of contact with a direct con conjunct contact with any of the major planets, right? right. So she really is the star of the show. Yeah, she through. just visited them all, right? She's, <laughs> she's done with her visits yeah. for now. She's just going to, it's going to be you and her together through this. She makes contact with both Lilith's and Vesta and her South Node, most notably. Yep. yep. And Leo. I mean, not Leo, Virgo. 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 Yes. And, and that's, I see Virgo and Pisces as bridge constellations, Virgo being the bridge between the self to the other. And so I think she's really going to give you that opportunity. Again, we go back to the authentic self. How do you show your authentic self as invited by Uncle Dave? How do you value that in yourself? What do you value in the world? And, and really hone in on that so that you can work with those energies of Virgo, being in service to self, being in service to others, you know, finding new ways to improve things and your health and routine, right? You may find that by the time the moon gets down to Virgo, you got a whole new thing going. Yeah. A yeah. whole new thing going with that because, Virgo fairies. <laughs> mm -hmm. Jupiter's got stuff to expand for you, Becky. So remember within... Within 24 hours of becoming new, she's collected Uranian energy, Jupiterian energy, Mercurian energy, Venus. I just, everybody has had their, you know what I mean? She's charged up with all of this on her visit through Taurus. So all of that is coming through in this new moon and it's going to be carried through all of these constellations. So yeah. yeah. And, and you know, the, the other part of it for you as a personal um, insight, all you out in cyberland there, is if you know your chart, you can see where, where uh, Taurus lives in the houses. So this is the area of your life that you're really going to need to hone in on to really understand what this new moon is asking of you. And if you start bringing in this divine feminine energy behind it, rather than the do-do-do of the masculine energy, you know, you're you're going to maybe get some really interesting insights to areas of your life that might really change because you brought the authentic piece of you to the party. Yes. Right. So, yes. yeah, it's it, like if you if this was somebody's natal chart, it, it straddles the 11th and 12th houses. So, you know, this is an opportunity to really intuit in to what the value of the 11th house is being out in community, the greater collective, the global effects of the world and and really understanding how that looks and fine-tuning it so that you can return to the all that is the i am return back to the, the the cosmos of pisces the 12th house right so i think this one's gonna could be really powerful just because of the you know party up there yeah i i do too powerful in a beautiful way in a yes. very way i mean it's it's asking us to feel our way through this next cycle. And yes. moon, you know, moons always do. Moon cycles are all about all about feeling. But I think this in an even more profound way because of all of the contacts that she made just before going new. And that she'll be by herself here. So, you know, the the journey is really about feeling your guidance with this animal rather than what should I do? Yeah. You know, okay, what do I need to do? What are my steps? What am I thinking? Well, what's coming through? What do you feel? What do you sense? What do you, you know, what's, what's the, so, so maybe, you know, when, how do I put this? If, if you get a spirit guide that is an earthly animal, like if you get a rabbit, 
then maybe take note of what you feel every time you see a rabbit. Yes. Yeah. Rather, yeah, rather than deeply study, okay, what does rabbit mean? Maybe re allow rabbit to tell you what it means. Yes. Yeah. You might notice that, okay, I've seen rabbit three times in the last month, and each time it's been by a garbage can. What's that mean? Yeah, I am this is top of my head making it up. Yeah. I, I think it's that sort of thing more than, you know, I want to hit the books and dive into everything that rabbit means. What's important is what it means to you. You know, yeah. we can tell you all about rabbits, but that may not that may not do it for you. So well, and be open to the idea too that it may not necessarily be the live thing showing up in your backyard. It could be. Well, let's see. Wait, is is the deer showing up here? <laughs> I um, saw me. Yeah. Um, but it could yeah. be symbols. It could, I mean, or replicated in a symbol or in, in readings or, you know, some book you're reading. All of a sudden you're starting to realize, oh, wait, there's a lot of reference to rabbits in this book. And I didn't pick it up before, you know, yeah. so it, it, that's, it, that's it, just it, for like it, an, the earthly animal. You know, you're probably not going to run into very many rainbow fish dragons in your everyday wanderings. So that may have a deeper spiritual meaning right then you may you may want to explore all right well what color was it right or what is the dragon or why exactly. is there a difference this is a you know instead of what you typically would envision in your head it may be an invitation to see the dragon in a different way yeah yeah so yeah so this could be really interesting you know and what i would would have loved for you to touch on because as the moon transits from taurus down and around to Sagittarius, she has a conversation with the Lilith friends here. So, and my dear, you have some wonderful insights in Lilith. So what, what do you make of that? Okay. Well, one of the Liliths, the black moon is the moon's apogee point. So whenever she conjoins with Lilith black moon, she is as far away from us as she can get in her orbit. So she's in there feeling all of the stuff that we don't like to feel she's feeling all of the parts of us that we would rather keep hidden that we don't think will be accepted that we're afraid people won't like maybe even that we are a little bit ashamed of although i would argue that lilith does not do shame yeah, true but but there there have been cast and projected upon her things that she should not do or be yeah. So she doesn't own the shame, but she will she will tell you what she has been told not to do or be, right? And with that being that close to the south node, this is probably a very long old conversation. Uh-huh. I mean, we're we're talking generations of stuff that people of your dna were told they could not or should not do or be that they should be ashamed of that they should try to hide so so that's that's one thing that might come up i want to tag off of that real quick and that what might come up in that regard is what tuning back into things that you truly enjoy through the senses, Venus, Taurus, that you've been told in the past you're not allowed to enjoy or That's something in your generation couldn't enjoy. Yeah. Or you have to be ashamed of enjoying. You that's know, the remedy, isn't it? If I like to finger paint my face with dark chocolate, oh, that's weird. But maybe that's something I enjoy. You know, I don't, but I'm just saying. It, I it, do. <laughs> I'll send you some. Um, but I mean, that's the thing is, is we've been, and especially if you have certain roles that you're expected to play a mother, a father, a daughter, a son, or whatever, oh, you're not allowed to. Lilith is asking you to go, wait a minute, are you sure? Are you sure it isn't time to really tune into the things you think you shouldn't have been doing? Mm -hmm. Especially if it's something that is a self enjoyment and not hurting anybody. That's it. You know, that's it. Now, fast forward to Lilith asteroid. Yep. Hanging out here. Right. Good old Libra. Hanging, hanging out here in Libra. Where, again, we get to resolve some of that tension between people. So, y'all, 
have I, I I have been allowing myself to take in the collective message that I need to be a mother. Lilith is like that is not working for me because Lilith always knows what isn't working for her. Lilith asteroid is the one who takes action. I think this because it's a physical planet; it moves, and that close to Scorpio. Yeah. And she has been, yeah, she's in contact with Mars. And I think that at that point she will still be opposite. Yep. She may be opposite Mars at, at, at the full moon point. So yes, there's going to be a dynamic tension between, I know what isn't working for me and wanting to move. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yes. And then here comes moon with that Taurus I love myself enough to move toward something that I do value that will work for me because it's all well and fine to know what isn't working, but having the self-love to own what would work for you and then the courage to move to it is a different thing altogether. Well, and Mercury, speaking your truth. Yeah. You know, knowing your truth, speaking your truth, because when the moon moves into Sagittarius, that becomes the higher wisdom. So you've got to get ready to move into that higher wisdom. How do you plant the seeds of that new moon to realize your own personal higher wisdom that will be invited by Sagittarius? So so there's, there's a lot for there's a lot in this moon journey, you know, starting out in Gemini with the new ideas and then moving into cancer with the creating a comfortable space and opening your heart enough to move through it. And then the Leo with the bravery and the self-expression and then the Virgo with the refinement of all. So there's, there's, it's going to be exciting and having a guide through this one sort of to keep us on that, venusian self-love path right because that that's going to be the mission isn't if nothing else whenever your guide presents itself to you it's probably going to be reminding you about the message of self-love remember remember the message here yeah was love yourself remember that that was our message and how you, can you plant those seeds in your garden of that? Taurus is that garden again. I love the, the connection of Taurus to the garden. And, you know, remembering, too, that the bull asks us to do this with a bit of stability and... Um, sure-footedness. Sure-footedness. Yeah, absolutely. It's like, you know, you can have a little bit of Uncle Dave wildness and throw the seeds out. But, you know, maybe kind of look ahead to where Sagittarius, uh, the full moon is to get a better understanding of what you want to harvest. Yeah. You know, yeah. be a little whimsical, be playful, have some fun. But yet, if you really want to harvest at that full moon, have a little bit of an insight as to what kind of seeds or how you might want to, or just different seeds, seeds you've never done before. Well, I mean, you know, in in Taurus, the, the 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 there is no the metaphor is not there, right? This is about real life. What yes. real results are you wanting to actually manifest in you? Not not just creating a headspace where you can go or imagining things. We're 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 wanting to bring forth from the realm of imagination into manifest reality, right? Yeah. And we do that with the sure-footedness of the bull because it has its feet on the ground. It's, I think there, there wasn't there a myth of the bull that everywhere its hoof was, the flowers bloomed? Yeah, something like There's that. There's something yeah. somewhere. Yeah. Bull. But, but I think you get, you get my meaning that the whole point of it is what is your actual life experience like and how can we improve it that's jupiter in taurus yep. and uranus too right off the gate what is your actual life experience life right now and how can we make it better <laughs> absolutely absolutely yeah. um and there was something else that was rolling around in my mind but obviously it rolled right out thank you mercury Sorry. Did I it's all good it's all good 
Um, yeah, it was something to do with. So I get with the garden metaphor. Yeah, it's not just about planting the seeds. It's it's growing them, tending them, harvesting them eventually, but but they're not even necessarily metaphoric seeds. Well, and this is what it was. It's the challenge of if you have we're going to go back to that black moon low south node business again. You know, you this what we've been programmed to believe if you've had in the back of your mind that I've always been told I'll never be an artist I'll, I've always been told I could never cook I've always been told I could never do a podcast I have always been told you know oh, you'll never amount to that this is your opportunity that if there's a piece of you that has that little spark when it comes up what you've been told you can't do or you believe you can't do plant one seed and have your guide help you to see the way you might do that. That's your challenge. There you go. That's your challenge. And feel into it. You know, if you think, I've always really wanted to explore culinary arts. I really want, but you can't make money on it. It's hard running a resume. You know, ah, ah. Put that Mercurian logic crap to the side and just plant one seed that if you feel like I really want to do something in the culinary arts, I just, I want to do something. One seat. Maybe you learn how to decorate cakes. Maybe you learn how to run your own smoker barbecue, whatever it happens. Right? To be. May, yeah. Maybe you watch a YouTube about somebody cooking and you go make that recipe. Yeah. For it's somebody who appreciates it. And then somebody gives you feedback and says, you know, this is delicious. Yeah. And, and suddenly feels. you start hearing words like you're actually a really good cook. Er? Yeah. I've never heard that before. Exactly. Well, never cooked for me before. So I've never had the chance to tell you. And, and, and picking that thing, you know, feel like if you, again, let's use the culinary arts person. So it's, if I say, you know, hey, Maria, you you kind of wanted to explore that culinary arts thing or you've been thinking about it. How does that make you feel when I say that? <gasps> yes, I love, I really, I have 20,000 cookbooks, you know? Pick something that you really feel that good about, but you've always had some sort of George on the shoulder going, eh, eh, not happening. So that's what we can find out from people on the Sagittarius full moon. What yeah. one did you plant? What one seed did you plant that you didn't think you had the ability to plant and nurture? And do you have a little sprout? How about we take a quick peek at that full moon just to kind of see what that okay. garden environment is going to look like? Have I had this screen share up like the whole time? We started <laughs> We started out with a screen share. Okay. It's, it's all good. We have faces, but mostly we're, hey, we're about astrology. With a little tiny faces. It's all good. So Here's there's our full moon. moon. Yep. And it's interesting. The new moon perfects in the morning, you know, U.S. time, and the full moon perfects at night. So this is really interesting. So we do get the, the counterpoint flavors, too. Yeah. But so. yeah, full moon perfects at night. So mm -hmm. you know, it's before sunset, though, so we yeah. see it won't have risen. Just past the galactic center. So yeah. this is really, truly the opportunity for rebirth. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. And Lilith asteroid is directly opposite Uncle Dave that day. <laughs> How much do we love that? And, oh, Mars is trying Lilith Black Moon, who will be way back in Leo by then. Look at her go. Nice. So yeah. it's fiery action. Um, wow. Oh, my. Almost square the nodes. Yeah, and the sun will just, like you said before, will have just ingressed into Gem, yep. Gemini. Yep. yep. So it'll bring some of that that curiosity flavor because um, Mercury is going to be in his home stars. Yeah, and we're just we're just days after the, the I think the, the Venus and Mercury can join at the Sun on the seventeenth. Okay. Yep. It's like it's a lot of one, power. Yeah, half degree Gemini, and on the Silver Gate. Yes. Yes. 
And That's a cool day. I don't mean to harp, but it really is cool. No, I think it's I, it's fantastic. Well, then Mars is going to be just about almost halfway through his st home stars of Aries. So this is the time to get ready to take that action of the full moon. It really is. Fun fact, Saturn is about to go retrograde at this time, too. He gets he gets all the way to the end of Aquarius and does not go into Pisces. He about faces. He begins his retrograde period. Just yeah. kidding. Just kidding. Kidding. Yep. Got some more Aquarius to go. So yeah, we don't we don't know it yet. So shh. Forget I told. <laughs> but yeah. That'll come up another time. Saturn is about to go retrograde. Yes. So we didn't spend a whole lot of time di dissecting exactly how the new moon will affect each individual person's connection, either through your natal moon or the houses, because this is the time to do it from the feeling perspective yeah. of your totem. So we will have this recording uh, either later tonight or first thing tomorrow. It has to render and then I can get it uploaded to Radical Astrology and then we'll get it out to our socials. And then um, my dear friend, Maria, will do her lovely recording of the guided meditation through the, as you call it, the Hall of Astrology. The, the Hall of the Zodiac. Hall yeah. of the Zodiac. There you go. See, this is why I have her here. We do this together. Um, the Hall of the Zodiac. And then we'll put that as a separate link so that you can access it anytime. It's not necessarily relevant to just this new moon. It'll be something you can work with. You know, maybe the, the totem that came or the... A uh, guide that came in is, like I said, a butterfly for me. And I kind of go, you know, I'm not really feeling that anymore. I need to go back to the Hall of Zodiac to kind of maybe see. All right. Now we're in the Virgo new moon. What you got for me now? But this but this is a tool, we hope. Yes. Was, our intent is that this is a tool that you can use to connect with these energies yourself rather than yes. tell, us telling you what you should be feeling based on the house. You Absolutely. Get it tell yourself. And then we're we're here to help you interpret. Yeah. And you can ask that guy too. You know, I have this new moon happening in my eighth house, you know, butterfly guide. How can I navigate this new moon energy in the eighth house? Show me some information. Give me a message, please. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, in, in my, in my experience, spirit guides are willing to dumb it down for you if you need it to. Like, seriously, show me in a way that I will understand. If you're sending me messages, I'm not getting them. We, we, we need to simplify. Or maybe you're like a champion meditator and you're like, oh, this sounds like the most fun ever. I'm going to get three guides and they're going to give me seven messages a day, which could. That's okay. That'd be awesome. Yeah. That'd be awesome. But, but you know, for, for most of us, it's what are you trying to tell me, especially when you're, you're deep in situation mm -hmm. uh i have the blinders on so yeah they're usually willing to dumb it down for you do not be afraid to ask you don't you don't have to just defer and listen they're guides they're here their job is literally to guide you and if yeah. they're not doing that you can call them out on it i don't feel very guided right now well and again that's like i said if you if you find that you're just not connecting for whatever reason to whatever guide is offered to you, go back. Yeah. And Turn and maybe, or even ask that guide, ask again, I've been using the butterfly. Okay, Ms. Butterfly, what else you got for me? Who else do we need to have a conversation with? Can you guide me to that? Here we go. And then she flies off and connects to a hummingbird or whatever, you know? So all sorts of possibilities there, but do we want to take the share screen off and Kind of tie okay, up the, the do that for a end of the um, discussion here. And so we see we got real faces here. Oh, and I've got a new present behind me. That's my new Tibetan crystal bowl that is going to sing in the tune of G or the note Ooh. of G. So really right. excited about that. But yes, so stay tuned, people. Start connecting to think about again what it is that you've always been told you can't do, don't have the ability to do, you don't have the time to do. You know, just open your heart to what it is that you really want to connect to that you value. That you value. So 
your little guided tour can open that up for you. So any other parting words, my dear? Wish us luck. <laughs> We're going to go make a guided meditation, not really knowing how. So, hey, you know, as you all know, we do this organically. We don't do this with the slick production editing. It's y'all came into the wine bar, the coffee shop, the tea shop, sat down with Maria and Julie and said, hey, I want to know more about this Taurus new moon. What you got going on? This organically, authentically, and sometimes hysterically, but uh, yeah. Yeah. And hopefully we fix the uh, go live with the radical astrology, uh, which will come up for the full moon uh, closer to the 21st of June. We'll do the go live there. And I, and there were some hose ups on Facebook and zoom having a little <laughs> kind of thing. So shout out to Michael Hardigan, Uma Steller for helping me figure out what I think will be the workaround. So um, if not, well, <laughs> plan B, at least Mercury is not retrograde. That is true. Yes. That is true. Everybody's moving forward. Yes. All right, my friends, we'll see you in the stars. So stay tuned for the upload. And uh, and also, I'm going to do a little begging here. I'm going to literally call it begging. If you are following us on any of the socials, please go to our YouTube channels, go to our socials, share them, click the button. This is how we get the message out to people. There are people who are not on Facebook or in Radical Astrology. So if yeah. you see a note from Maria, she uploaded it to her YouTube or a note from me, send somebody that link to give them the opportunity to see what we have to offer and connect them to the stars, you know, and, and I hate it, but it's, that's the life of being in the world of social media that you got to do the likes, share and subscribe, you know, the drill. So anyway, please do that. All right, my friends, we will see you in the stars. <laughs>